All right, guys, a while back I broke down the Hagler versus Hearns fight. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. But I got my partner here, Dustin, and we're gonna break down some of the mistakes that they made and what I think they should have done to correct those mistakes. And number one, we're gonna start with, I'm gonna play as Tommy Hearns. Partner is gonna be Arvis Marvin Hagler. And the number one mistake, first right off before we jump into it, anything Hearns made was I think he was overconfident. Not think, I think he was so overconfident. It became arrogance and I'll show you guys. You literally, you don't have to watch the fight. Watch the very first round when as soon as it starts. When the fight starts, literally, both guys are in their corners, and when the bell rings, Hagler comes out, Thomas Hearns literally just walks in, and then Hagler jumps and catches him with a hook right off guard. So you can see, right off the bat, Thomas Hearns took Marvin Hagler lightly. He shouldn't have taken him lightly because he was the undisputed middleweight champion of the world, and he was a deadly fighter, one of our all-time greats. He should have came out to the fight ready here to slide, ready, and in case of Hagler jumped, he could have been jabbing or ready, catching with a right hand. He should not have taken Hagler very lightly. Another mistake that Tommy Hearns made was he laid on the ropes too long and was squared up. So, Thomas Hearns was here. All this exposed, so he had to get in a fight match, a shootout with Hagler just swinging away, both guys swinging. But Hagler was winning because look at all this exposed. And he was in a stance where he has the full power to turn into his shots, while Hagler, uh, Hearns had to just depend on mostly his arms. That was a huge mistake he should have done. As a tall fighter, you never want to be squared up on the ropes. That helps the shorter fighter. He should have been here in his stance where he could now, I mean, he wants to be at the end of his punches. He prefers to be on the outside, but if you have to be on the inside, be in your stance where you can still turn, load up on your shots and roll, roll on the shots. That's a big thing that Thomas Hearns didn't do. He was just sitting there. They were either training or he was just sitting there just taking shots, having his hands up right here. Hearns should have been just here. Hit, hitting, rolling. Anytime you saw the shots, roll, roll, and then try to step out. Hit, try to step out. Another thing, another mistake that I noticed with Tommy Hearns, once again on the ropes, was he was squared up and he wasn't holding. He actually leaned forward. So he tried to do this, lean forward, while Hagler was letting his hands go. And he would just try to sit here and just stay, stay right in place as, um, Hagler was letting his hands go. Once again, I think Thomas Hearns should have been in his stance. And he, as Hagler was hitting, he should have been rolling. And then in between, try to hold, tie up. But you see how I locked the arms and pull Hagler to him. He shouldn't have just laid there hoping that Hagler holds him. He should have pulled Hagler towards him. So he's hitting, should have been here. Hold, pull him towards you. Slow the action down. Another thing he could have done, is once again, he should have stayed in his stance. He's hitting, he should have been blocking, blocking, throwing a couple shots, get out. Back on the jab, even if he didn't get back in the middle of the ring, pop that jab, keep him on the outside, where you can then hit, move, hit, move. He should not have been staying on the ropes. Even if he can't, main objective is to get back in the middle of the ring, but even if you can, this, where there's still some space to still move around is better than Staying in one spot for Hagler, squared up, sitting here exchanging, seeing who has the better chin and the better conditioning. At the end of the day, we saw at the, who had the better chin and who had the better conditioning. So, another big mistake is, if you watch round three, you can see Thomas Hearns was reaching a lot with his jab. When he was here, Hagler would stay right there. He was so far away that he literally jabbed, was trying to reach and lifting up his leg he got desperate. Whether Tommy Hearns was hurt or rocked in that fight, he should have let, he's the taller fighter with the longer arm. He should have kept his distance and stayed back here. Working that jab, pop here. Even if it's not a hard jab, it keeps that distance. It keeps a Hagler at bay. And if Hagler rushes in, he has to get past that jab where he can shoot a right hand and then slowly move out. Or use that jab, he comes in, hit him with a hook, get back on that jab, move. Like I said, even if it's not a fast, hard jab, I told you guys many times, I think a pawn jab sometimes is good just to understand the distance. Literally, just this right here. It's not effective, it's just letting us know, look, how there's starting to be a bend in my arm. Tommy Hearns should have known he's getting close. So then he can understand, I want him out like this. 
See, and that's what I think Thomas Hearn should have done. Just sit back more. Pop, pop that, pull that jab. Shoot a couple jabs. Let Hagler run in. Shoot a couple shots. Step out. Step out. Move. Hit. Constantly working that jab. Even if it's not effective. Even if it's just out there. It's okay. It keeps Hagler busy with something. And it kills the... More importantly, it kills that clock. It slows the pace down. Which Thomas Hearn wanted was a slower pace. Because Hagler jumped on him and it put an intense first round on Hearns. He wanted to slow the pace down, recover, and get into a boxing match where Hearns could tag, hit him with a couple shots, and slide out. So that was some things I think Tommy Hearns now that should have done during that fight. Now let's look at some of the mistakes that I saw from Hagler and that he should have correct to make that to make his win even better and easier during that fight. All right, guys, I'm playing Marvis Marvin Hagler. My partner here will play Thomas Hearns. Now, in the first round. Hagler, one of his big mistakes that I saw was that he kept trying to jump in with one jab or just jump in with one shot. And I'm going to use the jab to demonstrate because he would be this far away. This is the distance that Tommy Hearns won. He would be here and he will try to jump in with that one jab. Now, I saw it happen a couple of times. Thomas Hearns either call him with a right hand, jump in, he call him straight down the pipe, or you would even catch him with a quick one-two and then slide out. So, I think Hagler should have been using his footwork and multiple jabs that he, he um, multiple jabs to be on the inside to here, push behind. Even if um, Hearns threw that right hand, one thing I've noticed that I really like and admire that Hagler does is when he, on defense, watch him, when he sweat, slips, it's small slip, but he always raises that hand with him. So even if, he was jabbing and when Thomas Hearns threw that right hand, he could have rolled, caught it with his left hand, and guess what, started firing back the power shots, and guess what, he could have got inside and exchange, forced Tommy Hearns to exchange, rather than trying to jump in, get caught, and guess what, Thomas Hearns was out, okay? That's one thing I think Hagler should have done, was use his jab more, or even if he didn't use the jab, still use his head movement and footwork to get inside. I don't think he should have been just jumping up depending on one shot. I think he should have mixed his jab or his head movement. And the moment he started getting close in range, then he could have been, if he wanted, like he got mid range, even a little bit close, then he could have jumped in for his shot. But jumping from far range like this, where the advantage is Tommy Hearns, I think that was a big mistake. And that's where he was getting caught a little too much during that first round. And even later in the fight. Another mistake that I saw that Hagler did was he was moving a lot good, you know, second, third round. He started moving a lot more, and then he started trying to weave and slip, but throw a hook. And this is where Tommy Hearns was moving a lot because he was just using his feet, using his feet, and he was trying to come in, trying to jump in with a hook, and even there was a few times where he tried hooking for the body, Tommy Hearns would be gone. He'd just be here trying to get the body. I think Hagler should have shot more straight shots to set up those hooks. So what I mean by that is just in here. He's moving, he's moving. Shoot a couple straight shots. The straight shots will land. Even if it's just a quick tap, you know you're in range. Guess what? I can touch and then hit that shot. Or if I feel like, you know, I'm talking about as Hagler. If he didn't feel like he was in proper range, then, in that, then he could have jumped in with another shot. Let his hands go, let that hook, or even let the hook follow after that. So that's what I think Hagler should have worked a little bit more. Just here, straight shots, straight shots, up and down. And then eventually set those hooks up and even uppercuts that he was looking for. But mostly what he, I noticed he was trying to look for those right hooks. And he, there was even a few times where he even switched stances just so he could jump in with that hook. But I think if he would have hid that with the right hand, the jabs, Hide it with some straight shots first, it would have been a lot easier for him to land more hooks and break Tommy, Thomas Hearns down more quickly in the fight. So, all right, guys, I hope you guys understood the breakdown, the mistakes that I saw from both fighters. And I'll give you an idea of some correction that I thought that they could have made to make the fight a little bit easier on both of them. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Check out my other playlist of the other fight breakdowns, uh, my fight breakdowns, but also the mistakes and corrections that I think that I saw on both fighters and what they should have done to make the fight easier on themselves. But 
thanks to my partner and uh, Dustin. I hope we, to see you guys again. This is El Casa Gador, and I'm checking out now. I'll see you.